hands up if you love ink. Hoi hoi folks and welcome back. Yes, it is an ink day today. Um, as you might have seen on my Instagram, little sneaky peek, I have three new Ferris wheel press inks to check out today. These are some stunning colours from what I've seen in the bottle, but I have yet to swatch them out. So that's what we're going to do today and then see what we can create with them in terms of a piece of artwork. But first, Let's turn around, let's have a proper look at these inks, and then we can dive in. Right, okay, so as you can see, I have got three packages here, three boxes of ink from Ferris Wheel Press. So, if you haven't seen my last review of Ferris Wheel Press, first of all, yes, I am an affiliate with them, but just like all of my affiliate programs, they know I'm going to be brutally honest, so, and everyone is fine with that. Uh, so, the inks that we have got today are Cabernet on the Lake, Malibu Blush, and Bookkeeper's Brass. Two of these are very shimmery, shiny, and one of these is just a gorgeous shade of pink from what I can see. But we're going to crack those open in just a moment. So, a small word about Ferris Wheel Press. They are a premium ink company. They sell some fantastic inks and ink accessories as well. Yes, I am an affiliate, so I do get a small kickback if you want to buy anything from them. But if you use the code down below, go and check in the description, you can get 10% off any purchase at Ferris Wheel Press. So make sure you go and check that out. So last time I unboxed some of these, we got to see three different bottle shapes, which is the large round, the small bauble, and the kind of hexagonal pot. These are all the large round. Let me show you what I mean, because the packaging on these are superb. In fact, I usually throw away all packaging for stuff because it just takes up space, but I've kept all of my last ones in in their packages. But that is the Malibu blush. Look at that. And these bottles are just gorgeous. You have a little sticker on the back that tells you the name of the ink. And then you've got their branding on the front. Lovely stoppers as well on all of them. So that's the Malibu blush. And then we've got these two other ones, which have a little bit of a shimmer. So we've got Cabernet on the lake. And get this one open. And as you can tell, it's a, it's a uh, <laughs> much darker kind of burgundy colour. But just look at that shimmer where it's all settled there. If I give this a good shake... Can you see just how sparkly that is? I don't think the camera is doing it justice, but it is just gorgeous. It is really, really gorgeous. And it's got this kind of reddish gold metallic sheen to it, which is really lovely. And then we've got one that I'm very excited about. This is Bookkeeper's Brass. So I've tried kind of brass gold inks in the past and they're always a little bit hit or miss, but I had a little look at this one. So where it's been resting, you can see it's very dark. If I turn it over, look at that shimmer in there. That's the, the thing with all of these metallic inks is that they do have these kind of mica pigments in them. That's what creates the shimmer, but they also settle. So you do need to give them a good shake, but that is a stunning, stunning colour. These are all 38 milliliter bottles. There's a fair whack of ink in these. They're going to last a very, very long time. So, usually people that review these inks are calligraphers. I am an artist. I do not do calligraphy. So I test these out as an art supplier, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. Last time I drew a lovely bird. This time not sure really what I'm going to do, but I do know that I want to swatch these out. These are all water-based inks, which means they can be thinned and used as watercolours and all that kind of stuff. But first things first, I just want to swatch them all out and see what they're like on paper. So this is just a piece of A5 Bristol paper, nothing special about it at all. Um, I've got my inking tools over here. So I have, uh, these are Pentel brush pens. Um, which actually, the the bristles on these are exactly the same as you get in the Pentel 
ink pens. So whilst they are a watercolour pen, they are sensational for ink. So I use these quite a lot for inking. And then I've got a bunch of dip pens and other brushes in here as well. So these brushes, stand watercolour brushes, very good for inks. And then my dip pens. So I've got a few here, plus some extra nibs and a few other bits floating around. So um, I think first things first, we should probably try these as dip inks. And we'll give them a little bit of a swatch like that. So I'll shake each one, give it a little bit of a, a go. I'll do a little pipette of each of them. And then we'll brush with the brushes as well and just see what they look like. Stop right there. Yes, it is that time of the month where I do my monthly giveaway. So these are random any point during the month and I have a little something just over here. Let me slide it in. I have this desk set of Emot pens from Unis. Now I actually have several of these sets over here and I love them. They are incredibly good pens. They have a lovely, lovely line width and they come in lots of different fun colours. So this is the set that I am giving away this month. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning these pens in this month's giveaway is to comment down below with the word carousel. I'll pop that up on the screen for you as well. Carousel and you could be in with the chance of winning this set. Let's get back to the video. Okay, what I'm about to share with you is the importance of swatching out materials. So um, let me just show you what happened here. This is the Bristol paper that I was using and you can see that the Bristol paper has taken the liquid part of the ink and really dispersed it across the page, which has separated all of the pigment. Now, bristol paper is what I would usually use for carbon ink or India ink or, and, you know, permanent inks. But honestly, this has not fared well on the bristol paper. And it's because it's not that kind of ink. It's not a carbon ink. It's a completely different type of ink. So, what I decided to do instead, as I said, I've used these like watercolours before, is to use a watercolour paper. And just look at the difference in this. If I bring over this one, ugh, this one, much nicer. So already the importance of swatching because it shows you what materials work nicely together. Now I've done a few different things on here. Up here I've used a dip pen to see what the line strokes are like with this. Then down here I've literally just put a dot of each colour and spread it out just a small amount with a pipette. This lets me know which one dries the fastest and also gives me a good indication of what the inks are like when the inks are at the densest opacity. Then down here I've used a brush and I've literally just put a little swatch of each one in the brush, let that dry and then come back with just some plain water to see what the dispersal of the ink is like because these are not waterproof inks so I want to see what the uh, water dispersal of the inks are like and then right down the bottom here I've done a little bit of blending to see how these work so it just gives you an indication of what you might be able to do with them as a supply now this one the Malibu blush is the slowest to dry in fact you can see it's still slightly wet which is very good to know. This one, the Cabernet on the Lake, is the fastest to dry and the Bookkeeper's Brass is in the middle. It's closer to this one, to the Cabernet on the Lake. So the one in the middle, the Malibu Blush, that is just a pigment ink. These two on the side have a shimmer to them. So this one over here has a slight kind of pinkish shimmer, which you can just see if I catch the, the light right on there it is really very very pretty whereas this one the bookmaker's brass has obviously a brass pigment it's actually a very walnutty color the ink itself and then the the brass in there you see just just how shimmery that is that is honestly stunning so this has given me a really good idea i know what kind of paper i'm going to be using for this as well this is a hot press watercolor paper so it's nice and smooth I just need to think now about what I'm actually going to create with these supplies. Right, so I've just done a little bit of a uh, doodle. I'm going to have to wipe that up. I'm a little bit of a doodle. 
Uh, so this is what I'm intending to do. So this is a, a fish. Might be wondering what all of these blue bits are. This is actually masking fluid. So I said before that, you know, this worked really well on watercolor paper and that's what I've done this on. So I'm treating this like a watercolor. So this is what I would use as a resist for watercolor. So I think what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna start off with the Malibu blush because this takes the longest to dry and is the lightest of the colors. Then for the tail of the fish, I'll use more of the Cabernet on the lake. And then for bits on the body, I'm gonna use the bookkeeper's brass. But that's it, that's what I'm gonna do. I will say the other reason for going in with these two afterwards is because you do need to shake them to get those, uh, get the shimmer activated and working. In fact, Ferris Wool Press do an amazing little uh, ink pot. It's a little carousel and the pot actually goes on the lid so you can spin it and it shakes up everything inside and gives you a lovely, lovely finish, which I don't have yet. <clears throat> hint, hint, Ferris Wool Press, if you're watching. <laughs> I don't have yet, but if I do get one of those, I will definitely show you because they are amazing and they do work phenomenally well. But for now, let me get started on this and I think I'm gonna go in a few layers. So we'll do, as I say, pink first, then we'll do the others and then we might go back with some dip pen and do some line work as well once I've taken up the masking fluid. But before we do that, did you know I have a goal this year to get to 10,000 subscribers on the channel? And it's so easy for you to get involved and to help and to join the Frogface family. All you have to do, you see, just down there, right, right down there, there's a subscribe button. Just click it, that's all. You know what, if you wanna go the extra mile and really show people that you enjoyed the video, click the like button as well and maybe they'll join us. You know, you help me, I help you, I do giveaways and tutorials, all you have to do is like and subscribe, it's a win-win situation. Anyway, that's given you enough time to click the button, so let's get back to the video.
Okay, so there we go. Everything is all dry now and you can really see, hopefully, <laughs> if my lighting catches it, the shimmer in the, well, particularly the bookmaker's brass is absolutely gorgeous. This one is a little bit more subtle and actually if it wasn't for the bookmaker's brass, I think you would see this one much, much more. The inks themselves are, as always from Ferris Wheel Press, absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually quite pleased with this. I really like the way the inks work together and you can layer them up and you get some kind of pooling effects. The um, the fact that you can put the bookmaker's brass, which I think is my favourite colour so far from them, on top of other things and really get a gorgeous shimmer if you want to, or water it down and just get a lovely kind of walnutty brown. Yeah, just really, really fun. I'd love to know what you guys think, both of the artwork and of these inks. Have you tried Ferris Wheel Press before? If not, is it something that you're going to? And if you do, remember there's that link down below to get 10% off. But for now, as always, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And until next time, goodbye.